You're on. We are recording. Welcome. Oh, you know what? I got to turn up your sound. Hold on. Keep going. Keep talking. All right. Welcome to week 11 in review. This is Kevin coming at you live from Nashville. That's right. On location, folks. Kevin never sleeps and neither does our league. He is up and ready for this. Hi from uh, Music City, uh, America, right? That's right. <laughs> where are you coming from? Uh, oh, I'm from Roseville, same place. I'm the same place, same time, every time. Exactly. All right, I'm so a jet setter, you do nothing. Jet setter, yes, you're 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 jet setting to Genco, the hey, crap hole of HP. Before we get started, how was the team event? Oh man. Well, first of all, hats off if I had one to Jason for setting up such a perfectly pulled off event. Not. Uh, no, how would he know ahead of time? I don't care. These are the details that have to be covered. And obviously, left to an amateur, it didn't work. Uh, we ended up at Republic, Boo Republic now, uh, who now apparently does not allow children in a bar. Uh, last year, everything was fine. This year, they've now decided. I think maybe it was Todd and his ruckus last year. Remember, maybe they confused Todd with Don. Maybe they thought Don was underage, and that's why they're not letting anybody in with a mayonnaise jar. So... <laughs> So uh, so we had to uh, uh, make a new plan, so we went around the corner to a different place, which then the wait was like an hour and a half, and I'm like, okay, we're not waiting that long. So finally we just said, forget it, let's go to Players. We all headed over there. Sorry for the folks who drove downtown, then back over there, but had a successful turnout. It was, let's see, it was um, Jason in his Des Bryant jersey with his hipster hat looking awesome. Todd, who ended up getting sick, uh, catching whatever Josh had because he was homesick. Uh, Melinda showed up. My mom was there, obviously. Kevin Clemens showed up, too. So it was a great time. had by all everybody missed uh, you, Kevin. And uh, I think Clemens was truly confused. He thought you were going to be there, which really makes me laugh. And Joe, too. Oh, and Joe, too. Did I say Joe? League activities. Uh, Joe was there, too. Sorry, I thought I included him. But Joe says he's having a great time in spite of his pitiful record. So, yes, we wish you were there, but we understand business in Nashville. A businessman. Couldn't even turn on his right. phone. You couldn't even take a call from us. What were you doing that was so busy on Sunday afternoon? We're doing an inventory. And you didn't have your phone. You could say, hey, I got to take a break. What if you had to go to the bathroom? Oh, sorry. I can't go pee. I'm doing inventory. Well, I don't even think I get phone calls from Skype unless I have Skype open. Whatever. Excuses. We wish you were there. Moving on. Let's talk about the games. First game. It <clears> was the mighty Camp Krusty putting mighty. up 155 against the Pink Ladies who scored 83. It's like you beat up on somebody who didn't even try. Uh, let's talk about the players she had not going at all but still were in her lineup. Chris Ivory, Cecil Shorts, Jason Witten, and Justin Tucker. You basically beat somebody that barely put together a squad, so I don't know if I'd be crowing about that, Mr. Studley. I would have beat you. Please, whatever. You had a very good day from Le'Veon Bell. Thank you very much for the Pittsburgh win. Roddy White came to play for you. Jamal Charles with 30. What a game there. And Doug Baldwin, $61 paying off for 18. I hope he screws you in the end. Next up. Next up, we've got Krusty's Clown College pulling out a win. Over Mimi by 10 points, 93 versus 83. Again, this is just mind-boggling. Not so much that my mom lost that, that. That has happened before. But the fact that they both scored so low. Talk about an off day for both of them. We'll start with the victor first. <clears throat> Monty Ball with zero. I believe he got injured. Brandon Oliver with only four. And James Jones with five. On the other side, you got my mom with... Bobby Rainey for zero, and he played, I think. Um, Golden Tate for six, that hurt. Uh, Antonio Gates for six, and the Eagles for a minus three. I told her not to start them against Green Bay. Um, hey, you were the one bragging about how bad you wanted the Eagles. Yeah, I did, but I never would have started them against Green Bay. You got to know your role, pal. Anyhow, so tough loss for her, and what really hurts the most, on her bench, Reggie Wayne for 14, Kenny Sills for 13. Either one of those would have beat her opponent, but not that day. So, moving on. What's the next one that you're ready to crow about? Here we go. Malibu Stacy's taking Boom. down the team who lives up to its title. The worst team ever falls short, scoring a measly 112, getting beat 
by my lovely bride, 138 to 112. Hey, I would have beat both uh, Josh and my mom with my mighty 112, thank you very much, in spite of all my problems I had. I uh, <clears throat> had a problem there with Fred Jackson, who I never actually started. That was a zero. Um, <clears throat> also, Dwayne Allen, who got hurt in the first quarter, a zero. Awesome. Two goose eggs to start. And then a bunch of other cruddy scores. Darren Sproles with only six. <clears throat> Martavis Bryant for three. Jimmy Graham for five. Really, Jimmy Graham? You're at home for five. I had some nice spots with Aaron Rodgers for 36, Antonio Brown for 24, and Randall Cobb for 24, but not enough to beat the mighty Malibu Stacys, who had Matt Forte, who just killed me for 24. I'm lucky she didn't start Cutler, who had 31 on her bench. Uh, yeah. She had Tom Brady for 18, Jeremy Hill for 19, and Eddie Lacy. Again, man, it is like the double-edged sword. I love when Green Bay goes great and crazy, but the problem is, once they get so far up, it's all the Eddie Lacy shows. He just keeps racking it up. Uh, her only down was Travis Klecky, but didn't matter. She still won, so congrats to Dawn. I hope I face her in the end and then finally put this Malibu Stacys to rest. Next up. Well, well, before we move on to the next game, that victory did a couple of things. Number one, you are not on the top of the heat, and that spot belongs to Jason Devlin. Can we not wait for the standings? Is it that bad you gotta go? You can't keep it in your pants until we even get there? It's pathetic. Yeah. You are now tied with me for second place. But All who's, do but who's on top? Uh, that would be me, Power Bottom, so move on. Next right. game. The punishment due. Put up 130, but it wasn't enough to defeat the mighty Mouseketeers. <sighs> who were able to score 153. Yeah, we're talking about the Mouseketeers. It must mean we're talking about Mike Evans for 46. Are you kidding me? A.J. Green, <clears throat> no turf toe for 26 there uh, in that stunning upset against New Orleans. Peyton Manning for 19, kind of lackluster for Peyton, but uh, she need, she had what she needed to get it done over poor Todd, who got sick. I do feel for you, Todd, but uh, I'd still like to step on your toes. He had Marshawn Lynch for a paltry 15 for his big one. Uh, not big one for, for his off day, I should say. Alshon Jeffrey had a nice 32, and he had a smattering of nice scores. I do laugh at his bench, though. Andy Dalton, 27 on the bench. Andrew Hawkins, 21. C.J. Anderson, 18. He could have pulled it, but he didn't. So, anyhow, well, you hate better Andy luck. Dalton. I do. I hate him so much. But in this time, Beaker would have been better over uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, really? I mean, believe me, I'm not an Andy Dalton fan, but Bridgewater? Come on. I, well, all right. Next. We have Ralph Wiggum Experience, who put up the score of the weekend, 172 in your presence to take down oh. my namesake, 